We are with Project Veritas founder James O'Keefe. His new book, and it is sizzling, it's called American Muckraker, Rethinking Journalism for the 21st Century. You can pre-order your copy right now, or you can pick it up wherever books are sold starting Tuesday. James, thanks for sticking around. We weren't about to let you get away until we've had some more conversation. You guys got your start back in 2009. You basically single-handedly uh, did the country a favor by getting rid of ACORN, right? Yeah, we... We, we exposed ACORN, uh, a colleague of mine, Hannah Giles, she was then 20, I was then 24, we went around the country wearing a hidden camera in my tie. Uh, she presented herself as a prostitute and I was pretending to be her pimp, went undercover and did this sort of citizen sting operation, exposing the fact that they were in these meetings with ACORN officials. And again, ACORN was from Arkansas. Yeah, originally. they started there, believe Wade, me, Wade I remember Rathke. And Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now, Barack Obama, President Barack Obama was an attorney for ACORN. We went into these offices and they gave us tax advice on how to disguise the underage prostitutes on our tax forms, uh, disguising them as dancers and performing artists. The videos were, were so shocking, it, it would evoke audible gasps from people. We did this with no money. Veritas was in its inception phase. And, uh, you know, it was a scary thing to do. We did it released the tapes one at a time in September of 2009, and within one week, the democratically controlled House and Senate voted to defund ACORN President Obama, signing that legislation because two kids from effectively the cast of High School Musical 3, dressed as a pimp and hooker, went in there with a hidden camera. <laughs> what is the single thing you're most proud of that Project Veritas has uncovered? Because, I mean, there are dozens of things that you guys have exposed that the mainstream media didn't have the courage to touch. So there's gotta be something as you look over the past 20 years and say, this, this is what really matters to me. I think there was one moment in September of this past year, about four months ago, we exposed a teacher in Sacramento, California named Gabriel Guype, whistleblower in the school, had a picture of an Antifa flag in, in the classroom. So we went to a coffee shop to covertly record this teacher. And he told us, and I can't say it on television what he said, but I can paraphrase it, he wanted to screw with your kids and scare them. And he sends these children to Antifa rallies to give them school credit. And he was stamping homework assignments with Joe Stalin, an ink stamp of his face. This is a- I mean, a, this is a public is school. On, yes, in Sacramento. Taxpayer funded school. Yes, and he had a t-shirt with a hammer and sickle on it. It was so crazy, it was almost hard to believe. We released this video on September 1st and hundreds of outraged parents went to this school board meeting, it was live streamed. This was right before all these other school board meetings happened. And the parents were not Democrats or Republicans, they weren't left or right, they were just outraged sort of mama bears. Yeah. And they were just so indignant. And that moment, to me, I, it, I felt like a moment of consensus. It felt like that, that everyone was united and it was all happening because of this one video of this guy. And that's our, our, our mission. Uh, everything we try to do is, is forge consensus. Our country is so divided. And it's unfortunate that we are because there's only one truth. There's only one set of facts. You're not entitled to multiple realities. Exactly. James, you may have a political point of view, but, but I get the impression, and in fact, I've seen some of the work you've done, you'll go after anyone who is abusing the taxpayer or abusing the truth why don't other media outlets, why are we not seeing that from the Washington Post, the New York Times, from CBS, from the other networks? Why not? That's a very in-depth conversation I have in this book about the history of journalism, but it comes down to, I think, a tension in journalism between what I call access and autonomy. I think journalists have gotten so cozy for what little journalists are left, have gotten so cozy with their government sources, they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. They don't want to dig deep into the FBI. Within minutes of my, being, my home being raided, I was just fresh out of handcuffs, I got a text message from the New York Times. And somehow that national security reporter knew the contents of the document that I was holding in my hands. Why isn't the New York Times investigating the FBI? It seems like they're working in harmony with them. So, and then on the other hand, you get too adversarial and that can engender its own partisan factions. Veritas goes where no one else will go and our stories are determined by the whistleblowers, by these brave people I write about, people inside Google and Pinterest and the Department of Defense. There's a lot of good people 
working in education, working in the government, and they have to, I guess, follow their conscience. They have to come forward with the information about what's happening because we can't, we can't trust the press to do that at this point. What, what scares you the most? Is there something that just puts a chill down your spine about what's happening in this country? What I'm, I wouldn't say I'm, what scares me, but what I'm concerned about is people being so afraid. Yeah. The moment you stop, I write this in the book at the end, the moment you stop caring about what they write about you and what they think about you is the moment you're actually free to be effective as a journalist. Let me just tell you that uh, obviously you're not too afraid. You've done stuff that most of us would be scared to death to go. You've been where angels have feared to uh, tread. I really think people, when they read this book, will have a better understanding. I hope that people will buy it. It'll help you. But they can also contribute to Project Veritas to keep you going because you're not getting sponsored by any of the major woke corporations of America. So we're going to make sure our audience knows how to help you do that. James O'Keefe, I want to say thank you for joining us and most of all for the work that you're doing through Project Veritas. To find out more about Project Veritas and James O'Keefe's wonderful new book, American Muckraker. It goes on sale Tuesday. You can pre-order it right now. Go to Huckabee.tv. We have links to the book, to Project Veritas, and much more that James O'Keefe is doing.